Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates. In today's video, we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ESMWF, the GFS ensembles, and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office five day precipitation and temperature. Things are looking not great. Um, if you want cold weather, wintry weather, a lot of high pressure around over the next week or so, and the signs are that we're going to be seeing the pest from the west, i.e., pretty much constant flat westerly winds this is something we've been following for the last sort of five days or so saying there was potential and we are now starting to see it really firm up in the seven to ten day time frame so it is looking quite likely we'll be seeing westerly winds milder conditions more rain especially further northwards and there could be the potential for some stormy weather as well so do you remember if you enjoyed my videos much do like and subscribe and remember to follow them on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Also do check out channel membership, of course, does it as it does really help me out every month. So we do have a look at the latest GFS. You can see high pressure is over the top of the UK at the moment. And if we do have a look at the 850 HPA temperatures, you can see we actually have quite a cold air mass along the eastern side of the country. Basically, cold air has spread southwards over the course of last night or yesterday afternoon into into earlier this morning and we saw the minus sort of eight nine ten degree line move down eastern eastern sort of side of the country some areas saw really harsh overnight frost last night and we'll see another harsh overnight frost tonight few areas even draw wintry showers down in east anglia and parts of the north of scotland but it's not anything to shout about really this is probably going to be the coldest air mass we will see for at least a week or two now it's looking like things are going to be turning to around or above average with much milder weather coming along now these westerly winds that i'm talking about are not going to be arriving really for at least another week it's still going to be pretty chilly and frosty over the next seven days because if we do run through the gfs you can see high pressure stays over the top of the uk all the way through the weekend into Monday, still deflecting those low pressure systems. And perhaps by next Thursday time, we start to see the first low pressure systems push in to the far northwest, bringing rain and milder air. Um, and as soon as we get uh, out from under the centre of the high, we'll see more mixing of air and milder air masses coming in off the mid-Atlantic. And that high pressure will eventually get degraded away. Now, I want to emphasize it's definitely looking more westerly in the north, in the south. Still, our hints of high pressure trying to hold on is this high that we've had over the top of the UK doesn't want to let go. It's trying to hold on in the south, so things could remain a bit more settled and maybe more frosty in the south, but definitely further northwards, westerly, unsettled conditions. And right towards the end of the run, you can see real big westerly winds. Of course, there will be colder sectors, there will be some winteriness potentially over northern hills. But I'm not expecting anything major. You can see there, massive packed stratospheric polar vortex coupling up with the tropospheric, sorry, massive tropospheric polar vortex coupling up with the massive stratospheric polar vortex we've been seeing over the last few days. Um, and it does look like we're going to be seeing a significant strengthening of that as we have looked at the zonal mean winds in the last few videos. And of course, the AO, NAO, and we're seeing that prime example here of a big positive AO, very strong. Um, zonal winds and yeah generally just a flat westerly coming in off the north atlantic of course can be some chillier weather here or there but i'm not expecting anything great and if we do see those purples migrate closer to the uk which is very possible with this um, sort of pattern we would have to see the nao probably go a bit more positive At the moment it's looking more neutral slightly positive we'd have to see it go more significantly positive and that means this high pressure that we have in the north atlantic does subside a bit and if we did see that it could go very very stormy indeed so we'll have to keep an eye on that in the longer term but if you're looking for anything colder from the north or the east not looking encouraging at this stage now if we do have a look at the gm run um see what how that does compare again you see the colder air mass high pressure sits over the top of the uk over the next few days all the way into next week and then eventually we see this high pressure start to get break uh start to break down it does hold on definitely in the south for quite a period of time um a little bit longer than even the gfs run goes for could be weather fronts and cloud coming through but we could still see some frosty days and some chillier um sort of frosty nights sorry and some chillier days as well towards day 10 Perhaps hints of some amplification in the jet stream and that cold air pushing eastwards. And we could see a very cold northerly very briefly with this run. But there's not a lot of support from the ensemble members. 
I'm not seeing a lot from it at this stage, so uh, don't want to look too much into that. Not showing a potent northerly wind at this stage, but showing the amplification that could cause a potent northerly wind if we did run it on for another couple of days. But as I said, it's not looking encouraging. The long term drivers are not showing massive amplification, so I'd be very skeptical of this GM run. Still possibility, of course, um, still generally westerly, but showing a bit more amplified of jet stream, which could cause some very cold transit northerly. You can see that air coming out of Greenland is bitterly cold, minus 20 degree isotherm moving through there. So by the time that reaches the UK, it could be minus 10 or so. So it still could be very cold, but again, the long-term climate drivers are not, um, are not, not really showing this. NAO, AO, stratospheric winds, um, even the tropospheric winds that I'm seeing from a lot of ensemble members are not um, showing this sort of amplification. So I would take this with a pinch of salt at this stage. But of course, it is a scenario we have to take into account. Now, if we do have a look at the ECM WF, um, high pressure over the top of the UK over the next. Uh, week or so eventually low pressure just starts to push through maybe a little bit earlier in the north than we anticipated on the gem run and on the gfs by sort of day six day seven low pressure pushing in and all the way to day 10 you can see flat westerly coming in off the north atlantic center the highs to our south spiraling up mild air from the mid atlantic from the azores and just a flat westerly wind would be mild cloudy breezy with that and there would be showers especially further north it's closer to the low pressure system and that would be really quite mild as well it'd be a scenario where it's windy cloudy but sort of 12 13 14 degrees with those mild upper air temperatures that's proper autumnal conditions not wintry conditions um and i know a lot of people have enjoyed the sunshine and frosty conditions over the last couple of weeks and i know a lot of people would prefer that very much to these sort of westerly winds but it does look like the westerly winds in the longer term are going to win out now if we do have a look at the gfs ensembles now you can see generally around or above average over the next 10 days it's below of course quite significantly right now with the colder air mass so yeah go return to above average but you see very little precipitation so still under that high pressure system all the way until around day seven day eight and quite a few of these ensemble members are keeping that high pressure all the way to the first days of february before precipitation really ramps up and of course with high pressure over the top even with those milder air masses we'll see we'll see a bit of an inversion going on temperatures around maybe slightly above or below average depending on exact air masses and of course around freezing at night but as soon as we see those westerly winds pick up more mixing of air milder air masses will be definitely giving much milder conditions on the surface and that's what i'm seeing in the longer term you can see the operational gfs run is quite a mild run within the ensemble members some going much colder quite a few staying around average um, but at this stage westerly winds definitely do look like uh, the most likely scenario uh, but I can't, of course we've got to discount the colder runs uh, but i'm not uh, but i'm not seeing massive evidence in the longer term um, for them to verify if we do have a look at the sea level pressure you can see it is dipping in the longer term around the 30th of january starts to dip to around 1020 millibars so i'm going much lower of course as i said in the south we're much more likely to hold on to that high pressure for quite a bit longer um, whereas if we go to Glasgow, further northwards, um, you can see pressure is generally lower. But again, it will come in cycles um, as it doesn't look like it's going to be a massive um, low pressure fest. Definitely westerlies, but not stormy at this stage. You can see hints in the longer term from some of the ensemble members going much, much more low pressure. But the centre of those look likely to sit around Iceland towards Greenland because, as I said, the NAO, uh, NAO is still near neutral. So that's going to mean we still have high pressure in the North Atlantic, trying to push it away. But the westerly winds are too strong. The tropospheric polar vortex is too strong. It's going to win out. And that's what we're seeing in the longer term um, with more low pressure, rainy conditions. And again, if you have a look at the Glasgow temperature and precipitation, um, 6 Z run. Oh, sorry, we'll look at the 6 Z run. You can see long term, very much lower pressure there. And again, if we have a look at the age of DHPA temperature and precipitation, around average, maybe even below average, and massive precipitation spikes in the long term. Some significant spikes, even 26, 28. So in around a week's time, um, it could be seeing quite significant precipitation returning. So if you enjoy the dry weather we've had recently, it looks like it will be coming to an end within the next 10 days. But it's still, of course, got another sort of five to seven days to enjoy it, perhaps longer if you are in the south. Now, if we do finish up the video, have a look at the uh, precipitation temperature. Again, uh, previous videos uh, over the last week I've made much longer, looked at more in depth, but not a lot is changing. Still 
very much a Wesley theme. And I don't think there's any point making really, really long videos where I am sort of repeating the same point, especially with sort of the ECNF ensembles, which are still showing some colder scenarios, but the majority are westerly winds uh, with a low pressure to the north high pressure to the south again as i said slight different changes in the positioning can give us transient northerlies some colder conditions but it's not looking um uh, we won't be knowing that until we're in the sort of the short five to seven day time frame uh, remember this westerly pattern it or westy phase doesn't look like it's going to be beginning for another seven days so we'll look at those things nearer the time of course so if you have a look at the precipitation you can see um, a few wintry showers over the course of the east, uh, eastern half of uh, England over the course of today, but they're fading away quite significantly. We're going to see a harsh overnight frost tonight. Where the cloud does move in, it will bring those temperatures up, as we're seeing a bit more mixing of air, milder air pushing in, um, in from the west, and then generally some showers, some thicker cloud into the north, and we're going to continue seeing that um, over the next couple of days um, with cloud in the north some weather fronts trying to push in but not quite making their full way south which is bringing a bit of cloud through so the beautiful sunshine um it does look like it may wane over the next couple of days especially further northwards should still be there in the south but does look like there's going to be increased precipitation in the form of drizzle light showers and thick cloud especially across scotland as the days go on as we see Low pressure systems trying to push in, but not getting all the way through that would give much more widespread unsettled conditions. Now, if we do look at the max temperatures, you can see today, temperatures really peaked around three or four degrees. Really quite chilly day. You'll have noticed the nip in the air out there. And that's because we're under pretty arctic air mass, especially across the east. For the westwards, you may be thinking, oh, what's all the fuss about? It's seven, eight, nine degrees, nothing too dissimilar from the last few days. But for the east, it has been much chilly. And you can see some areas haven't gone above freezing today. Over the course of this evening, temperature's going to plummet. We see temperatures widely down to minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 degrees, even towards city centres across many parts of the Midlands. Central southern England, we can see across the north, those temperatures are rising, um, where cloud does move in. But at 9am, pretty much everywhere um, from northern England southwards and parts of the southern part, the southern Republic of Ireland, going to be right minus 1 to minus 4 degrees. Really, really quite cold night. Widely cold as well. So it's going to be a lot of ice around, frost around, so do take care with that. But, thankfully tomorrow, temperature's going to slowly rise. Maybe still 4 or 5 degrees in the far south and maybe the east. But generally, areas are rising as mild red does push in. Friday night, still potentially a bit of a frost in the east and the far southeast. But many areas holding above freezing. And Saturday, coldest temperatures, 5 or 6 degrees in the far southeast. Maybe 4 degrees down the far southeast. But many areas get up to 7, 8, 9 degrees. And we're going to see temperatures hover above freezing, around maybe 2, 3 degrees on Sunday night. Sunday afternoon, again, 6, 7 degrees, so average conditions, and we're going to see that continue. Uh, low single digits uh, on Sunday evening before, again, 5 to 7 degrees on Monday, and that cycle pretty much continues. Um, as we're seeing a slight bit more, mix, bit more mixing of air, so it's going to mean those frosts are not going to be as widespread, but still possible um, in local areas. Uh, so of course, cloud is picking up, which will reduce frost risk as well. So it's looking pretty chilly still over the next few days. Highs of around 5 to 7 degrees quite widely. Lows of around freezing or maybe just above or significantly below um, perhaps tonight. But uh, I'm expecting this can be the coldest night we're going to see um, for a good week or two now. Um, and beyond that, it does look like the pest from the west is going to come with full force with flat westerly winds. At this stage, it's difficult to say because it isn't in the longer term whether it's going to be very stormy or whether it's just going to be generally just unsettled, mild uh, and westerly. Uh, a lot of people probably won't care because it's going to be similar sort of patterns with milder air masses, um, a lot of precipitation and some stronger winds. Just a difference between if it was stormy as we'd see much stronger winds and potentially some much more squally rain and uh, potentially if we get those storms coming in from the northwest could see some real cold polar maritime air masses for a period of time and that's where we could see you know uh, you know some significant showers hail stuff like that so that's something we need to keep an eye out over the next few weeks again not got the details nailed on but definitely does look like westerly winds will be winning out over the next few weeks so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed podcast is coming out tomorrow morning so make sure you check that out on the tongan volcano looking at potential climate impacts uh, so i'll see you again for another video soon